All right, guys, so before the video starts, I just want to give a huge thank you to Card Mechanics for actually coming on here and showing you guys a very, very cool card trick. Um, we both kind of added variations to this. Um, my version is on his is on his channel, so if you guys want to see how I did it, you guys can click the link in the description box uh, or in the link here, and you can go over and subscribe to his channel as well as watch the video. So without further ado, guys, I'm going to go ahead and let him take over the rest of the video, and you guys can get to meet Card Mechanics and learn a very, very cool card trick. So... Anyways guys, here is the video. What's going on guys, Card Mechanic here, and I'm super excited to be on Hester's channel. It is really exciting, some of you may or may not know me, so this is a good time to know me now. And I have an amazing card trick to show you guys, so let's do it. All right, now check this out. For this trick, I'm gonna actually need a spectator, but since I don't have one here, I'm gonna be my own spectator and the performer. So, as a performer, I'm gonna start off, hand the deck over to the spectator, and turn completely around for this entire part. I'll tell the spectator to go ahead and pick out any card they'd like. Let's just say this card right here. Take a look and remember that card. Once we got it, we can leave it here, face down on the table. And now I want them to make two even piles of no more than 10 cards. So let's just say they make those two even piles. And let's just say that's good enough for now. Now I tell them, take one of the piles, put it in your pocket, since my pocket's not here right now. I'm gonna leave that right there. Take the other pile, put it on top of your selected card, and take that entire pile and put it on top of the deck. Once that's done, me as the performer, I'm gonna turn back around and continue with this trick. Now, of course, I have no idea where that card is, but I do know it's somewhere between one and 11 cards in the deck. So we're actually gonna mix up the order of those cards, right? So I'm gonna have a spectator tell me a number between one and three. Let's just say they say number one. All right, then now, now I'm gonna take my turn. I'm gonna say three, so one, two, three. They can go now as well. Let's say they say two, one, two, then I say one, um, let's see. Uh, they say three, one, two, three. There we go, and now I say two, one, two, and they say three, one, two, three, and we'll just stop there for now, All right? So now we'll take these cards, put them on top of the deck, and now to make this even more difficult, I'm gonna ask the spectator to take their cards out from their pocket. Boom, there's that pocket. Put it on top of the entire deck. Now, of course, I have absolutely no idea where that card is, but a few years ago, I actually wrote down a prediction and put it inside this box. All right, so I'm gonna take this out right here, have that prediction right there. And this prediction, if we can open this up, has the number 15 written on it. So let's actually take a look at the 15th card. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And if we take a look, it should be your selected card, the Four of Diamonds. All right, so let's break this down. I like to use this as kind of a prediction effect. So I like to start off by having my prediction written down on a piece of paper. And you can always use the number 15 because that's what it always lands on. So I got my prediction written down. You can do this before the performance, during the performance. You can't do it after, but before or during the performance, you can write your prediction down, square it up. And I like to put it in a location where I can't reach, but everyone else can see the entire time. So I just leave it in the card box, put the card somewhere on the table and really not pay much attention to it. Now we come over, we start off pretty much the same way that I started off in my performance. Hand the deck over to the spectator, I back off, turn around, close my eyes, do whatever. But now, as I'm doing that, I give them instructions. So first thing I tell them to do is to go ahead and pick a card. Let's just say they selected that card right there, the Seven of Spades. So they take that card, leave it face down on the table. Now the next instruction I tell them is to make two even piles of up to 10 cards each. So let's just say they want to put five cards in each pile. So three, four, five. Okay, so that's all good. Now from here, I want them to take one pile, put it in their pocket. Now here I actually have a pocket, but I don't want to put the cards there. So leave the cards there. And then the other cards, put it on top of their card, take all those and put that on top of the entire deck. Now once they're done with this, then I turn back around. So now from here, the main goal is to reverse the top 15 cards of the deck. Now there are a couple of ways you can do it, but of course you don't want to be obvious about it where you're just dealing off 15 cards. 
you would look weird and they'd be like, you're definitely doing something. Right, so I like to come back around and tell them I have no clue where that card is, but I do know it's somewhere within the first 11 cards. Right, so now we're gonna mix up the order of the deck for the top X number of cards, right? So I like to start off, now I wanna keep this interactive as possible. So I have them give me a number, I deal off that many cards, I do a number, deal off that many cards until we're at 15. But of course, I don't tell the spectator that we're getting to 15 cards. That's something I just keep to myself in my mind. Okay, so I like to start off by having them say a number. Let's say they said the number two. So I count one, two. One thing you have to notice is I'm not counting one, two. I'm counting one, two. So the cards are being dealt on top of each other and not just under each other like this. Right, so now they say two, one, two. Now I'll say three, one, two, three. Let's say they say one, one, uh, I'll do three, one, two, three, right? So uh, you're, going, you're going to have to keep in mind what number you're at. I think now we're at nine. Yeah, we should be at nine cards now. So we're at nine. Uh, I believe it's their turn. Let's say they do two. So one, two. Um, so that's 11. Now I do one. And the reason for that is because I want to get to 12. So now regardless of if they say one, two, or three, we can always end up at 15. So we're at 12 now, let's say they say one, that's 13, then I say two, 14, 15. Again, don't wanna count this out loud and always wanna end up at 15. So now you tell the spectator, okay, the cards are mixed up on top, it's somewhere in there, I have no clue. You're gonna take all these cards, put them back on top of the deck, and now you're gonna tell the spectator that I wanna make this even more difficult, I want you to take the cards in your pocket, put them on top. So boom, that happens as well. Now from here, you're gonna tell the spectator that you made a prediction a while back. And again, in my performance, I said a few years back, it could be a few decades back, depending on how old you are. Pull that prediction out, toss that over to the side, open that bad boy up. There we go. And we'll see the prediction is the number 15, right? So now from here, you can actually hand the deck over to the spectator, have them count off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15 and they'll see if their selected card the seven of spades So I hope you enjoyed my variation on this trick again a huge shout out to Hester for having me on this channel It is definitely an honor to be here and of course to perform for all of you Now if you guys want to see his variation on the trick head on over to my channel the card mechanic and I'll see you there. Peace out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.